Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. I want to invite you to go ahead and find your seats. I know there's just such a spirit of joy in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just celebrating all that God has done. Hey, church family, put your hands together one more time for all those that were baptized this morning. We celebrate with you. I am so grateful for all that the Lord is doing in our church. How about you? Somebody say amen. Amen. You may or may not have noticed that last week Pastor Cynthia and I were not here. And Summer's going, I didn't notice at all. That's weird. (laughs) We noticed. Uh, I heard the service was great here, and, and uh, Pastor Trish brought the word, and there was just a, a, just a great time together. I'm so glad about that. Pastor Cynthia and I were actually on the East Coast last week. Every year, our denomination uh, is called the Foursquare Church, and every year we have a, a national convention that's called Connection. When I was growing up, it used to be called Convention, but we realized that just sounds too, maybe just, I don't know, too corporate. We're a, we're a community of pastors and leaders from around the world, and so we're going to call that Connection. And every year it moves from one place to another, and this year it was in National Harbor, National Harbor Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. And so we were there last week with uh, nearly 3,000 pastors from around the world. And it was just a wonderful time. There were national leaders from 154 countries that were present for this connection. And it was just amazing. I'm so thankful that we got to attend that. I'm so grateful for our church council here at the bridge that made it possible for Cynthia and I to attend that. Honestly, it is something that we look forward to every year. It really is just one of those amazing and kind of very rare experiences for us where we aren't required to do anything. (laughs) <laughs> and we get to just sit and receive, and that's what we did for sure, and just received so much refreshing and encouragement from our time in worship and the Word. It's wonderful um, to be able to run into old friends. Uh, we had dinner uh, on the first night with two dear friends of mine that I went to Bible college with, and we, we don't get to see a lot, but we, we look forward to these connections to be able to be together. There were a few meetings that Pastor Cynthia and I uh, were a part of as well that were uh, connected to our relative roles within our denomination. I think that you know that each of us have uh, a role outside of uh, our church here um, that we're privileged to serve our family in, and we were a part of those meetings. For those of you who know our family very well, you'll be glad to hear that we got to see our youngest daughter, Savannah, and give her a hug and go out to dinner with her one night. She is um, serving on an amazing staff of pastors at a church called Light Church in Encinitas, suffering for Jesus in San Diego County. Uh, Just, yeah. (laughs) But it was so great to see her. We got to see, some of you remember my son-in-law, Reed, who is married to our oldest daughter, Victoria. They live in Snohomish, Washington. And we didn't get to see Reed much. It was just kind of like a drive-by hug um, because he was actually in charge over all the next-gen ministries that were taking place at the convention. And so, but at least we got to say hello and and, um, give him a hug. Well, I've been going to convention for nearly 30 years. And over the last 23 years that I've been pastoring this church, I look forward every year to coming back from convention to be able to share with you Uh, what God is doing in the Foursquare family. And I am so excited to be able to share those things with you because you are part of the Foursquare family. If the bridge is your home church, I want you to know today that you are part of a global denomination of of believers. Almost 100,000 churches in 154 nations around the world. We're part of that. And uh, it's exciting for us to be part of that. I was, I was sharing with Pastor Cynthia this week that in, in my studies over the years, I've come to learn that one of, the, one of the core values that exists in our human nature is a desire to be connected to something bigger than ourselves. And I hope that today as I get to share the praise reports of what God is doing through the Foursquare Church around the world, that you will feel that in a strong and profound way, that you are part of and connected and integral to what God is doing through the Foursquare Church around the world. You are part of something much bigger than sometimes you may realize or see in front of you. That's exciting, isn't it? 
I have been in this Foursquare family, this denomination of Foursquare churches, my entire life, which on Friday uh, marked 57 years in the Foursquare family. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It began with my grandfather, uh, who was the first generation Foursquare pastor in our family and who tended the same Bible college that I did, that many of my kids did. It's kind of our family alma mater, our seminary. It's located in Southern California, Life Pacific University. And he was the first generation of Foursquare pastors. And since then, there have been many, including my, my father and many of my aunts and uncles. In fact, it's, it's a really amazing thing and something that I'm so grateful to the Lord for, that just in my immediate family, with Cynthia and myself and our adult children and some of their spouses. There are seven Foursquare pastors just in our immediate family. So we, we love this family. We are so honored to be a part of it. I'm honored as well that, that Pastor Teresa uh, is an ordained Foursquare pastor in our denomination. And not only that, that, but she serves our region, 54 churches, as a missions mobilizer, helping churches and leaders get in contact with missions around the world. And so when her and Gavin came to our church some 10 years ago, it wasn't very long after that that we began to think and pray and talk about what it would mean for you to come into this denomination. And now she's a leader. I remember the first couple of times, T, that you came with Cynthia and I to convention, you didn't know very many people, and so you, would, you were with us. Of course, we wanted you with us. And then the last couple of conventions, it's like, where's Teresa? Oh, she's gone. She's in meetings I don't even know about. She's, she's working with people. She's doing good things around the world. It's super exciting. And then this year, I'm just going to let you know that our very own worship leader, Tamar, is going to be a licensed pastor in our Foursquare denomination this year. He's got a big interview on Wednesday morning, 7 a.m., be praying and interceding for Tamar. Uh, this is part of the process. And then, of course, when all that's finalized, we're going to have a wonderful celebration as we did with Pastor Teresa as well. Uh, but it is wonderful to be a part of what God is doing around the world. And I think sometimes when we look at our world, depending on the lens in which we're observing it, um, we can un unknowingly be convinced that maybe God is not moving around the world. And maybe that evil is triumphing. And maybe it's just like, wow, what are we even doing this for? It doesn't seem like it's making any difference. But I want you to know today that it is. I am personally, as your pastor, grateful to be under the covering and the accountability and the support and encouragement of our denomination. I firmly believe that every good leader should be led. And I am led by pastors and leaders that I submit my life to, um, that I'm continuing to grow and mature and become everything that God has called me to. This year's convention or connection was actually a very important one for us in terms of the governance of our denomination. Uh, at this year's connection, we had a really important vote so we have a, a president, Pastor Randy Remington, who's the president over the Foursquare denomination. And he's been served, he just finished his fourth year of a five-year term as our president. And uh, at, the, at that end of that fourth year, the, the incumbent has an opportunity to allow their name to stand for ratification uh, if they want to be considered and, and uh, encounter a vote of ratification where then they could serve a second consecutive term. If they don't want to do that, then they'll finish out their term and we'll have an election the following year. And through much prayer and consideration, Pastor Randy, who is a dear friend of mine, we actually went to school together and I just admire him. He's such an amazing man of God. Um, he and his wife prayed and, and fasted and said, yeah, we feel like we want to leave our name to be considered for ratification. And so we had that vote in one of our general business sessions this year. And um, by nearly a 90% approval vote, Pastor Randy was ratified. So he's going to be able to serve another second term for us, which I think is wonderful. It's, it's, it's really a blessing for us. Um, in fact, I want to do something. I, I, want, I have a little video. I know that not everybody is familiar with Foursquare and, and who we really are. And I've just got a little video that I'd like to share with you before we continue in our message. Let's go ahead and watch the screen. So why do we call ourselves Foursquare? Believe it or not, it has nothing to do with our skills on the playground. No bobbles, double taps, or Texas twisters. Back in the 20s, our founder, Amy Semple McPherson, began referring to the message of the gospel as being four square, which back in the day meant solid and balanced. 
Amy's message focused on four essential aspects of who Jesus Christ is, and those aspects are easily represented by the logo before you now. The first box, the cross, represents Christ the Savior. Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God who died on a cross to pay the price for our sins. Because of His sacrifice, we can actually have a relationship with the Creator of the universe. The second box is a dove, which represents Christ as the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, a dove came down and landed on Him, showing the Spirit of God was one with Jesus. The Spirit of God does the same thing today. In fact, we describe our movement as Spirit-filled, because the impossible is possible when people are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The third box is a chalice, which represents Christ as the healer. Jesus cares and is involved in all of our lives. Whether our issues are emotional, spiritual, or physical, God has the power to heal the deepest of wounds and cure the darkest of afflictions. And the final box is a crown, which represents Christ as the soon coming King. Amen. Simply put, Jesus is who He said He was. No matter how dark or confusing the world may get, Jesus will be returning one day to make all things right. So there you have it, four squares, representing four aspects of Jesus Christ, making a four square doctrine that is solid and balanced. We may not agree on every little aspect of how we live our lives as followers of Jesus. As long as you join with us in believing in Christ as Savior, baptizer with the Holy Spirit, healer, and soon coming King, well, your faith sounds pretty four square to us. This is part of the, this is the movement that we're a part of. And, and I want to encourage you that if you'd like to receive more information, get to know a little bit more about the doctrine and theology and the practice of who we are, again, in 100,000 churches around the world, you can go on our website, and there's a link there to our Foursquare website as well. But it's really just an awesome privilege to be a part of this incredible movement. And I brought home some, some praise reports that I want to share with you about what God has done through our church in the last year. And when I say our church, I'm talking about who we are as the Foursquare denomination. Over this last year, this is amazing, we saw 43,668 salvations around the world. And that's up nearly 2,000 from the previous year. So don't believe the lie that God is not moving, that, that the church is not growing, that, that people aren't getting saved and, and experiencing the fullness of what God has for them. Over the last year, 8,000 people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's over 1,000 people in, uh, up from the year previous in 2022. Amazing, right? In the last year, 11,516 people were baptized in water, just like we did today. So I want to say this to all of you that were baptized today. So next year when I come back from Connection and I share with you the statistics from 2024, know that your number is part of those water baptism numbers. Come on. Amen. Over the last year, we saw 26,000 miraculous healings. 26,000, up 4,000 from the previous year. God is alive and well. He is on the throne and he is moving through his church. And then lastly, on any given Sunday, there were over 205,000 people that attended a Foursquare church around the world. And again, I share that with you because I want you to know what you're a part of. When you think about the bridge, you can know that the bridge is part of this global family of pastors and leaders of born again men and women just like you around the world. We are part of something amazing. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise one more time for all that he's done. You are in those numbers. You are a part of that. And I hope that your faith is encouraged by that today. Um, we can never forget that God is in control. And the Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. It doesn't mean that they won't try, but it means that they won't prevail. As my grandfather used to say, I read the last page of the book and we win. Yeah. Amen. We win. Hallelujah. This year at Connection, there was kind of a, a prevailing theme uh, that was resonating uh, through lines, so to speak, in each of the messages that were being, that were being shared. And in essence, we as pastors and leaders 
through the Foursquare denomination, we're being encouraged to hold the line and to be faithful to the calling that God had placed upon our lives. And I want to share with you today that that admonition to hold the line and to be faithful to the calling that God has placed upon your life is not just for pastors. It's for all of us. All of us. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, don't give up. Tell somebody, God is still on the throne. One of my favorite speakers this year was Dr. Doretha O'Quinn. And she is an amazing African-American pastor and leader uh, from Los Angeles. And her charge to us was similar. And the title of her message was Stay the Course. Stay the Course. She said, where God brings you, no one can take you from. And she challenged us to relently relentlessly pursue what God has for us. Everybody look at me for a moment. I want to say to you today, stay the course. Stay the course. Don't ever forget what God has done, what he's brought you from, and, and the promise of his word and where he's bringing you to. Now is a time, as we, I believe with all of my heart, are in the end times, where the Bible says that many will stray from the faith. And they will, they will be drawn to hear what their itching ears want to hear instead of the narrow path that God has called us to. Stay the course. Be faithful in the calling that is upon your life. Re-up if you need to. Rededicate your life to the Lord. Rededicate your gifts and your talents and your abilities, the resources that God has blessed you with to the Lord because they all belong to him and they're all from him. And I want to say to you that God has an extraordinary plan for your life. The Bible says that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us, the church. And you are part of the church of Jesus Christ. You are connected to a global movement and revival is spreading all over the world. And I want our church to be one of those places, a place of revival where we are gathering together, we're saying, God, if you can use anyone, Lord, use me. We need that word today, amen? Relentlessly pursue what God has called you to. I can tell you that as a pastor, and as gathering with many of my, my fellow pastors from around the world, this was an especially uplifting and important message for us to hear because the statistics for pastoral ministry are a little bit bleak, if I'm being honest. The most current numbers are that nearly a thousand pastors every year leave the ministry for loneliness, burnout, betrayal, rejection, discouragement, and depression. And so I was so grateful to, to be encouraged and to be uplifted and affirmed in, in that this is the good work that we're called to do. Amen? But the reality is it's not just pastors. There are believers all over the place that, that experience the temptation to check out. It's just too hard. I love a quote I heard from a movie one time. It said, it's the hard that makes it great. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. But we're, we're those that have been called. And we've answered the call to God upon our lives. And so let's stay the course together. Amen? Let's raise the bar. Let's finish well. Let's keep the faith. Let's fight the good fight. Let's finish the race. And so I want to encourage and remind you today of who you are in Jesus. Psalm 139 verse 13 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book 
before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Your life is not a coincidence. You were created by a sovereign God who knows everything about you, who knows every hair on your head and all the ones that you're losing like me. He knows you're coming and you're going. He knows your thoughts and your dreams. Your life is not random. I believe in order for us to stay the course, we have to know who we are. And we live in a world that wants to convince us and the enemy is hard at work to try to convince us that we are not who God says that we are. And so we must be a people who are grounded in his word, his faithful word, that not one word will return void. And if you ever doubt your identity, if you ever doubt your value, look at the cross of Jesus Christ and know that he would have done it all just for you. He has a plan for your life. Your life is important and it's meaningful and it's precious to God and it's precious to this church. And we want to see you experience everything the Lord has for you and fulfill every good dream that he's placed in your heart. Stay the course. Amen. I believe we also need to be reminded of why we are here. I love the promise of Jeremiah 1 verse 5 where God speaks to the prophet Jeremiah to say this, and I want you to receive this for yourself. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. And I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's for every one of us, that our lives would prophesy of the goodness of God. Some of you know my story, and you know that I, I, I never really knew uh, my, my birth mom. And her, uh, her and my dad divorced when I was just a baby. And uh, for the rest uh, of, of my life, and, uh, until she passed away when I was 16 in a car accident, I never knew her. I, I never had a conversation with her uh, outside of the times when I was just a little baby that I don't remember. So everything that I know about her is a story. And I got to be honest with you that sometimes when I read these verses about before I was in my mother's womb, you formed me, and I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And even the song that we sang this morning, Canvas and Clay, are sometimes challenging for me. Because there's a lot of pain and, 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 and there's been d discouragement in my life over the years of that, of that lack or that loss. But I'm reminded that even though I was in a place where the enemy had plans for my destruction, that God turned it all for my good. See, I shouldn't be on this pulpit today if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Amen? I shouldn't be here if it wasn't for a praying grandmother. I shouldn't be here today if it wasn't for faithful parents and good friends and family and, and, and the body of Christ. If you were with us this morning in our team prayer as we gather every morning at 9.35 in the cafe, I shared with him that today, for whatever reason, I woke up and I said, God, thank you for Sundays. Because all of my life, I was born on a Friday and in a church on a Sunday. That's not an exaggeration. I probably missed a dozen Sundays in my entire life. There's something so beautiful and wonderful, something I am so grateful for, that I'm part of the family of God. Amen? As we sang today, we trust in Him. We've sought Him, and He's heard us, and He's answered us. So whatever your start was, that does not define your ending. A lot of us in this room had a lousy start, but God is up to something good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. This is what God says to you. I appointed you. You, you have an appointment. You have an assignment. Do you hear that today? God is not intended for you just to stand on the peripheral and watch what everybody else is doing. He's got something for you to do. An important work. Amen? And so we need to know who we are in order to stay the course. We need to be reminded of why we are here in order to stay the course. And we need to know who our enemy is in order to stay the course. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, 
Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I want to say to you today that there are powers of the dark world. There are spiritual forces of evil that are at work in the world. And one of the schemes of the enemy is to get you and I to fight each other and to fight the people around us, to distract us from recognizing that he is our real enemy. And that's one of the things that I think most quickly derails people. Why people, I think, are, are prone to leaving churches and bouncing around from one church to the next is because they allow a spirit of offense to come in with another person instead of recognizing the agenda of the enemy and pursuing peace and pursuing agreement and doing everything as much as it depends upon us to walk with one another. So don't be distracted. You're going to have disagreements. We are in a volatile time, even in our nation right now, and we know that. But I am convinced, I am putting a stake in the ground, family, like, enemy, come at me. You are not going to divide my church over politics. We can disagree and still love each other. In fact, we're called to it. And it's not just a, 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 a suggestion. It's a command. We're going to pursue peace. We're going to pursue agreement. We're going to leave all of those ideas and ideologies, good as they may be, founded as they may be, what you believe and what you think about as they may be. But we come into this place of knowing that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He alone is on the throne of our lives. It doesn't mean we disconnect. It doesn't mean we push away from the table. We're to be civically involved. We're to pursue justice. We're to do it from a biblical framework. But the bottom line is I have known for the last 23 years that I pastor both sides of the aisle and everybody in the middle. And it's okay. So don't forget who your enemy is because the enemy wants to distract you. Amen. And in order to stay the course, I believe that we need to be reminded of our goal. Our, our goal, our purpose Paul writes this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I press on towards the goal, which is what? To win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Your goal and mine, your purpose and, and mine is to populate heaven. It's that simple. To let our light so shine before men to live counterculture, to live consecrated. It's not just about raising our hand in a service that says, I accept Jesus. It's about following Jesus, which means that we submit and surrender every area of our life to his lordship. Salvation is not fire insurance. It's a relationship with God that is reminded that everything we have and all that we are comes from him. Amen? And so we want to spend time with him so that we can be more like him. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Come on, let's do this for a minute. Let's stand together. Join the hand of somebody next to you. This is Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, but I'm going to borrow it. I'm going to take some latitude on my birthday week. And I'm going to borrow this. And I want to, I want to declare this over us today. Everybody with me? Look at me. And I want you to hear this word over our community this morning. Therefore, the bridge, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Somebody say, stay the course. Come on, give Jesus a clap and a shout, and you can be seated this morning. Amen. God is with us, and he's for us. 
We have a great work to do, family. Amen? Let's be about our Father's business. Let's be about our Father's business. God bless your time at Table Talk. Thank you.